Solar pool heaters can be a great long-term investment, but the buying process can feel intimidating. Don't worry. All it takes is some careful planning and a little research to find the right solar heater setup for your pool. Check it out. First, how does a solar pool heater actually work? Well, when water is pumped from your swimming pool through your filter system and back, the water passes through a group of solar collectors, warming it up. There are pros and cons to using a solar pool heater. For one thing, they're expensive and can cost between $3,000 and $4,000 to buy and install. But they'll save you energy and money over the long run, and they can last up to 15 to 20 years, which is longer than gas or heat pumps. But remember, a solar heater is only as good as the amount of sun you get. Okay, what do you need for a solar heater setup? First, you'll need a solar collector. This warms the pool as it circulates through, and you've got two options. Unglazed collectors, which are heavy-duty rubber or plastic panels, they're treated with an ultraviolet light inhibitor to protect them from damage, and you have glazed collectors, which use copper tubing on an aluminum plate and have iron-tempered glass covering. They're more expensive, but they're also more durable. So cheaper unglazed panels may save you money up front, but they require more maintenance in the long run. Next, you'll need a lot of space in your yard or on your roof. The surface area of your solar collector should equal about 75% of your swimming pool's total surface area. This is called the three-quarter rule. If you keep your pool open year-round, bump that up to 100%. For example, if you have a 16 by 32 pool that's open part of the year, you'll need about 384 square feet of solar collectors to heat your pool. And then finally, you've got to have the right setup. You'll need a pool filter, which removes debris before it's pumped through your solar collector. Of course, you'll need a pump. The solar collectors are big. They need a powerful pump. And so you might need to upgrade your existing pump to a larger one. And finally, you'll need a flow control valve. And this valve diverts pool water through your solar collector for warming. Real quick before we continue, if you're looking for an easy to follow tutorial that'll answer all your pool questions, go check out our pool care handbook and video course. You'll get over 30 in-depth video lessons and a step-by-step -step downloadable guide covering everything you need to know about pool maintenance. It's packed with money-saving tips so you can save money and time keeping your swimming pool clean. This is the ultimate manual for every type of pool, including in-ground, above-ground, and in-text blow-up pools. And the best part is we always keep it up to date. So once you buy it, you have access to the latest and greatest version for life. So because you're watching this video, you can go to swimuniversity.com slash pool and use the promo code video. Next, how do you decide where your solar collectors go? You can mount solar collectors almost anywhere near your pool, but they need the right orientation, the right tilt, and enough sun exposure. Orientation is the direction the panels are facing. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, your solar collector should face south where you'll get the most sun. And depending on where you live, you may be able to face it up to 45 degrees east or west. The other factor is tilt or the angle of the panels. This depends on your latitude or how far you are from the equator and how long you keep your pool open each year. The further away you are from the equator, the more you'll want to tilt your collectors up. The third factor is your location's available sunlight. How much sun does your backyard get in a day or a week or a pool season? If you're building on an unshaded south facing area, you're good to go. You can compensate for less sunlight with a higher efficiency system. Okay, now it's time to go shopping for a solar collector. What should you look for? You'll wanna pay attention to its thermal performance rating. These are in BTUs per day or British thermal units or MJs per day or megajoules. High efficiency systems not only produce more power, but they also need fewer panels. Systems within 25 BTUs a day of one another are roughly the same. If you know the price and efficiency of the models you're considering, you can calculate how much energy the solar collector will produce for every dollar you spend. For example, if you know that you need 21,000 BTUs a day, each collector panel costs about $387, you get 54.26 BTUs per day per dollar spent. It takes a little math, but once you know the numbers, you can shop for the biggest bang for your buck and start soaking up the sun. And that's it. That's all you need to know about buying a solar heater for your pool. If there's a pool care topic you'd like us to cover in a future video, please leave a comment to let us know. And hit the like button below if you found this video helpful. 
If you want to learn more about pool maintenance and troubleshooting, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And check out the Pool Care Handbook and Video course at swimuniversity.com pool. Don't forget to enter the promo code video to get 10% off. That's it. Thanks again and happy swimming.